Hello, my name is Phil Calvert from IFA Life and a very warm welcome to this very special edition of Advisor Live where we're looking at the key issues that IFAs and financial planners are facing in their businesses. Today we're looking at the internet and social media and we're asking the question is it just a time-wasting fad or does it really offer value to professional IFAs and financial planners? In the studio, I have the owner of Serenity Financial Planning, Tina Weeks. Hi, Tina. Hi, Phil. And uh, joining us on Google Plus today, uh, we've got Pete Matthew from Jackson's Financial Services down in Penzance. And we've also got one of the leading IFA transition coaches, Brett Davidson. So turning to you, first of all, Tina, you've uh, always had your website right at the heart of your online activities. Um, to what extent has that really worked for you? Well, when we put the website in place, Phil, it was really the core of our marketing strategy. And it was really important to us that the website was clear and concise so that when consumers came to look at it, they could see exactly what we did and how we did it. And then we tried to keep the message consistent by making sure that everything that went on on other social media platforms was aligned to that same message. I see. And uh, it's great to have Pete Matthew with us today because he really has been one of the pioneers of using video for personal finance education. Uh, we were very lucky that a couple of weeks ago we went down to spend a day with Pete at the seaside in sunny Penzance and uh, we put a film together. Just take a look at this. Hi folks and welcome back to Meaningful Money. Here I am on uh, Long Rock Beach, just outside Penzance, on probably the windiest day that I've ever filmed on. I know squat about marketing. This stuff for me is just natural. It's engagement. The platforms are there now that whatever you are passionate about, whatever you can speak lucidly about, you can get your message out there. I don't spend any money on search engine optimization or anything like that. I think that's dying if it isn't already dead. But I do have social media searches running for Advisor and Cornwall. Uh, IFA and Penzance. I have permanent searches running on Twitter for those things, which means I'll get a ping if somebody says, anybody know a good IFA in Cornwall? And I'm there like a shot answering questions. Just filming videos and putting them on YouTube or a website doesn't mean that people are gonna find them and watch them. Whereas perhaps three or four years ago, people might search Google for reviews on a particular product. Now they will ask their peers on Facebook and they'll ask the same about financial stuff. And so that's where I need to be. The power of social media for me is listening. Sure, you are producing content and um, sharing, but the, it's real power, and the thing which I think is often missed is the power of listening. So searching for the terms that you're interested in. The ability to search geographically. So I have searches running for people mentioning certain terms within 100 miles of Truro, Cornwall. Um, and I can answer those questions, and these are people local to me. It's interesting to know where people are coming from and I mean half of my views are on Facebook for example. Um, it's mostly men in the 35 to 44 sort of age bracket. This is a uh, website called Hootsuite which is like a social media dashboard. So this allows me to filter. So here is my list of favorite tweeters. These are people who have mentioned me. These are direct messages people have sent to me, so private messages. So it's a real, this is a power user's Twitter tool. It enables you to keep an eye on all these sites in one place. If an advisor is not using these tools going forward, a fact is they're just gonna be disadvantaged. There are many tools they can use. They need to pick one or two and do it well and hit it hard. But if you're not there, you're gonna be invisible in the future. Pete, that was absolutely fantastic. I mean, many IFAs tell me that social media really has no place uh, amongst an IFA's marketing communications tool. What was it that made you think originally that this was something that was going to be of value? It was never my intention to get business from it directly, although that is happening now, which is fantastic for my, uh, my sort of regulated company, Jackson's. Yeah. Um, it was just to get good information out there. But I'm just increasingly convinced that it, it's going to be essential to be someplace on these channels uh, in future. It's got to be part, but not all, of a sort of comprehensive marketing mix. OK, thank you. I mean, turning to, uh, to you, Tina, um, it's not just about YouTube. It's not just about Twitter, uh, LinkedIn and, and, uh, and Facebook. One of the questions that's coming through time and time again, lots of people asking questions here, is, is anybody actually making any money out of this stuff? For me, I was as cynical as anybody else and it took a long time to see results. But the biggest surprise was the geolocation tools and how they've been working. 
Um, very recently, for example, I had a meeting with a top family law firm in London. And while I was there, I sneakily under the table checked in. Um, and what I found a few days later was some of the other solicitors firms that I'd been talking to actually noticed that and thought, well, if she's working with the top family law firm, then maybe we'd like to work with her too. And yeah. suddenly, I had a couple of leads come in, completely unexpected. So it's so much about people getting to know you and getting to know your personality. And these platforms are fantastic for that. Um, I feel I've held a networking meeting in, uh, in London uh, last week, I think it was, uh, where we had a number of IFAs and some providers came along as well. And uh, we've got a bit of, bit of video now just to get some thoughts and some opinions of, from some of the people there. Let's watch that. Well, if advisors want to attract um, younger generations, they're the children of their clients, they've got to get with 21st century media. I mean, I've seen it work for myself. Uh, I had a client meeting today, which was a referral from a client that gave me some information on social media. I have another client that uh, involved himself in a Facebook conversation with one of his mates who was struggling to get a mortgage. And he just basically said, you need to talk to Doug because he's you know, performed miracles for us. So it's, it's amazing how it, it can work for you. I mean, Brett, you're, you're uh, professional working with uh, financial advisors who are very much looking to the, looking to the future. Uh, is social media for, for every IFA? Uh, um, would you say there are circumstances where really this, this genuinely doesn't have any relevance for them? Uh, it, it, it's so hard to say. I, I, I'll be honest, there's lots of people I work with who are running very good businesses, getting lots of work through, and they're not in the social media space. So at the moment, it, it, it's not, um, you know, I think there's a million other things as well that matter in your business. Uh, but, but it's not to say that they won't get engaged or, or won't find ways to, to, to move into that area. And I, I just think um, the world is changing, you know, we're, we're so much more interconnected. To, to, say that it's, to say unequivocally that it's something that you wouldn't be involved in, I think would be very, very dangerous. Okay, thank you. And Facebook, I mean, Doug Bennett's been on, he's got a personal Facebook page. Um, will that do, or does he need a business page as well? How, what are I have thoughts? a personal Facebook page, which I try and keep personal, although yeah. I do connect with lots of colleagues and people in the industry as well. But I also have a Serenity Financial Planning page, and that's where I try to get out information about the business, personal finance issues, etc. Yeah. I try and link the two together. But yes, I think it's really important to have both. Would you agree with that, Pete? Is it, is, does it really not matter what particular tool or website we're using? Does it just come down to people by people at the end of the day? I think it's essentially what it comes down to. I think you need to find a tool that works for you and stick with it and don't try to be on them all. I'm a bit of a tart. I like to sort of try them all out, but I tend to uh, sort of err back towards YouTube and Twitter. Um, uh, I tend not to get on too well with LinkedIn, despite it's obvious incredible power my thing really is video so find what you're good at find what you enjoy and stick to it because either way it's all about putting yourself across as a real human being who can be known and trusted and then followed well thank you very much to the three of you really appreciate you uh, giving up your time today it, uh, it's been great some very useful insights thank you very much indeed